Hey everybody, welcome to Ty's Tech Line. This is our first official episode and I'm super, super excited. So on this channel, we answer your tech question. So the tech question for today that we're kicking this whole channel off with is, how do I set up my EOS R to shoot video? So let's answer that question right now. So the EOS R has had a really interesting life cycle. When it first came out, uh, everyone kind of hated on it just by looking at the spec sheet of it. They sort of laughed at Canon and said, oh, haha, nice try with your mirrorless camera. Uh, I actually have an entire podcast episode about this if you want to listen to sort of my thoughts on the EOS R. Um, I'll link it up here or down in the description below. But uh, for some reason, in the last couple months, uh, there's been a resurgence of the EOS R and it has become probably the most popular vlogging camera for YouTubers. And it's sort of just, everyone sort of realized that this is a really, really amazing camera. And when you actually get to use it and you don't just look at the spec sheet, it performs really well. So this is a really popular camera and a lot of people are picking one up for the first time just now. And the question I get asked all the time on Instagram is, Ty, how do you set up your EOS R to shoot video and how do you get it to look so good? So in this video, we're gonna answer that exact question. We're gonna go through all the different menu items that I'm changing in the EOS R specific to video so that if you have one, you can get yours up and running and shooting a really awesome video in no time. So let's just jump into it and start going through all the different menu options. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that the camera is in movie mode. To do so, you hit the button up here on top in between your little turn dial here, and then you're gonna hit info. And then these are gonna be your different shooting modes. Now, I am going to be using manual exposure mode because that's how I prefer to shoot. But this is where if you wanted to switch to AV mode or shutter priority or any of the auto modes, this is where you would do so. But we're gonna switch to manual video mode right here. All right, so in the EOS R, this quick time menu here is gonna be where we're changing a lot of things on the fly. We're gonna come back to that last because there's a few internal settings we need to set up first before we get to this quick menu here. So we're gonna hit the menu button right here on the camera and we're just gonna walk through some of the different options. One thing to note is again, you need to be in video mode in order to see all of these settings. There are different settings for photo mode and different settings for video mode. So make sure that you're in video mode before we get into all this. So the first thing you wanna set up when you first turn on the camera is gonna be your frame rate and your um, file size. So if you come in here then and go into movie record size, you're going to have a lot of different options. So without getting into all the nitty gritty, this is just where you're going to go change that. Most of the time when I'm shooting, I'm shooting in 1920 by 1080, 23.98 frames per second in all I. Um, the difference between all I and IPB is going to have to do with the way that the camera is capturing each individual frame. So again, without getting into too much of the nitty gritty, all you really need to know is that all I is gonna be a much larger file size and IPB is gonna give you a smaller file size. But here's where you'd want, if you wanna to switch to uh, 60 frames per second or if you wanna to switch to 4K, this is where you're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 23.98 frames per second in all I, cause that is what I prefer to shoot in the most. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to change is gonna be your sound recording mode. Um, if you're just having this on a gimbal, like how I use the camera most of the time, leaving it on auto is gonna be fine. But if you're recording dialogue or something like that, you would wanna come in here, switch this to manual, come down to record level and then you're going to, you can dial this up and dial this down depending on your preference. And the goal here is you want your audio levels to be peaking between negative 12 and negative six dB. Um, and that is just gonna make sure that you don't peak, you don't have your audio be too hot, but it's gonna sound nice for your recording. So once you get that set, hit okay, and then you back all the way out. The next setting we're going to change is going to be our picture style. Now, this is really important. So for me, what I like to do is I like to use the neutral profile. And if you come down here and you go to hit info, it's gonna give you the option to customize this. So as you can see, I have mine set to the strength at zero, contrast at negative two, saturation at negative two, and the color tone at zero. So it'll look like this, as you can see here. Um, this is just a good idea to reduce some of the sharpness, reduce some of the contrast in the camera so that it's not baked in and this just gives you a little bit of a flatter profile to use in, in color grading and it allows you to have a little more flexibility once you get all of your footage in post. Now one really great thing about the EOS R is that it comes with 
Canon log built right in. So if you wanted to use log, this is where you'd go in here, turn it on. 10-bit is only um, going to be enabled if you have an external recorder. So you're going to do on 8-bit. And then right here, you'll see you have an option for view assist. And essentially what this is going to do is instead of showing you the very, very flat and gray looking footage that you get from shooting log, if you have view assist turned on, this is going to give you a preview of what it's going to look like with uh, a little bit of color correction applied. So when the view assist is on, it's going to look better on your screen, but you're still going to be getting the Canon long footage in your actual recording. So if you come down to color matrix, you also have a couple of different options for what you want that uh, preview to look like. Um, this is kind of going to be a personal preference. You're going to want to play around with these, but I just want you to see where this is. And that is going to be your settings right there if you want Canon log. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back off because I normally don't shoot in log. The next setting we're going to change is going to be on the wrench icon folder number two, and it's going to come down here to your display brightness. Now, I like to use my display brightness on manual and not on auto. Now, the reason for this is because with auto, it's going to be constantly changing depending on your lighting scenario, and that's going to be really hard for you to judge proper exposure. So I like to pick a display setting that, and I normally go with six here, so it's not the full brightest, but it's right there at number six, because this, no, this allows me to know that it's going to be consistent no matter what the scenario is, and I'm always going to have a good reference for judging my exposure off of the back of the screen. So the next setting here is going to be one that's a little bit less obvious, but is really, really important. So on the EOS R, this, uh, there's a little sensor right here on the iCup that if you cover, it'll turn the screen off and turn the electronic viewfinder on. And that's all well and good when you're doing photos and things like that. But if you have this on a gimbal and you're reaching across with your right hand to use the touch screen, a lot of times what I'll find is that I accidentally uh, cross this as I'm trying to make adjustments on the touchscreen and it's very annoying for the screen to keep turning off. So what I do is I make it so that that sensor is disabled. So in order to do that, you want to come down to display settings, display control, and then switch it to manual and you want to manually display the screen. So this means it'll leave the screen on and the EVF off. And if for some reason you wanted to switch these, you can come in and turn this over here to viewfinder and it'll turn the uh, EVF to be on permanently uh, in this manual mode. Again, I like using this mostly in gimbal mode. If you are going to be going back and forth and using the EVF a lot, you should just leave it in auto because it'll let you do that. And whenever I switch back to photo mode and I'm going to be using the EVF, I do put it back to auto. But for gimbal work and for video work, I always leave this in manual. One great thing I love about the EOS R is it actually has very good battery life, uh, all things considered. The But one thing to help with that is you want to make sure if you go into your wireless communication settings here, go to Wi-Fi settings, and you want to make sure that this is disabled. Same thing with your Bluetooth functionality. You want to make sure that this is disabled. It's going to just make sure that your Wi-Fi remote and everything that's inside of here will be off and it'll help make your battery life last a lot longer. So when it comes to customizing your buttons, this is a lot of this is going to be personal preference based on what you like, how you like to work, all those different things. But this is where you're going to go come in here and do it. And on the left hand side, you see that you have custom buttons that are photo specific only when you're in photo mode. And on the right, you'll see that you have custom buttons based off of being in video mode. So it's going to be up to you to come in here and kind of poke around and see what it is that you want to change. But as you can see, you can change change um, all of the different directions on the on the number pad here. Um, there's a you can change a lot of the different buttons. So I suggest that you come in here, kind of take some time to poke around and see what it is that you like and what you would prefer to have um, in these different settings for your custom buttons. One really great feature that the EOS R has that a lot of other Canon DSLRs do not have is it actually has peaking, which we've been asking for for years and Canon finally gave it to us. So to set this up, you can go into the AF number two. Go to manual focus peaking settings. Here you can go ahead and turn it on. You can change either high or low, kind of depending on how much peaking you like to see. And you can also change the color if you want it to be red, yellow, or blue. Uh, again, depending on your preference, I use red because that's guess what I'm used to. But you can come in here, you can change all these things. And it's just a really great option to have on a DSLR camera from Canon. Finally. And then the last thing you're going to set up when you're setting up your EOS R is going to be your My Menu. So here's where you can take all those settings that we just changed and that you might have to change frequently, especially if you flip back and forth between photo mode and video mode. And you can add them here. So it's really nice that to give you a, a couple different menus that you can add so you don't have to be limited to just one like you were on other Canon cameras. Um, so you basically come down here to configure. You can select items to register. And then it gives you a whole list of different things that you can add to your my menu, depending on what it is that you want to be doing. So some of these are video specific, some of these are photo specific, but let's say we want to add movie cropping here. We're going to come down and hit OK. Oops. 
Oh, we can't add any more to that particular one. So we can come down to configure my menu two. Same thing, we're gonna select items to register. We're gonna come down here to where we just were, which is movie cropping. Go ahead and click okay, hit okay. And then you will see here if we go back, back that we have now added movie cropping. So we can go ahead and turn that on or go ahead and turn it off. So this is just really nice to be able to have all the different things that you wanna be changing on a regular basis right at your fingertips. So you can see here the ones that I have enabled. So I have my picture style cause I change that often. So let's go ahead and change that into neutral, movie recording size, my sound recording. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on auto. My Canon log settings, if I do wanna use Canon log, my format, my card, so I don't have to dig around for it. My wireless communication settings. And then over on menu two, I have the manual focus peaking settings, the display where I can turn the EVF on and off. And I, we just added moving cropping as you saw. So those are the ones that I have on there. Again, this is totally up to you, totally customizable. There's lots of options that you can add on here and how you wanna organize and sort them, but these are the ones that I have. And then the last thing we need to cover is gonna be this Q menu here. So you can get to it either by tapping the Q up here in the right-hand corner on the screen, or if you just hit the Q button over here on the right. This is where you have a lot of control to get to a lot of these settings really quickly as you are actually shooting. So in terms of our autofocus, um, zones. So over here on the left, we have face tracking, which is great if you're doing an interview or something where you have somebody who you really want to track their face. The one that I use most often, for, especially for gimbal work, is going to be zone AF right here. The reason why I like this is because it is a big enough box that it's not so small and so precise. I feel like I'm going to miss, but it's also much more accurate and it gives me, it's not so wide that the camera is making a lot of decisions. It's kind of a happy medium. So when I'm using the gimbal, I almost always have it kind of up here in the sort of in the middle towards the top portion again, so that that's most likely where the person's face is gonna be if I'm filming a person. But again, the nice thing about this camera is that because it's a touch screen, you can just kind of put it anywhere that you want, depending on what it is that you're shooting and you have a lot of functionality by doing it that way. But that right there is how you change your different AF modes. Again, you can really quickly get in here to change your uh, frame rates and things like that if you want to change that. Uh, this is where you monitor your, this is your headphone volume. Don't get this confused with your actual mic volume. That's a different thing, but this is how you can adjust your headphone volume. Uh, movie Digital IS, you do have some digital image stabilization you can apply. It basically it crops into your image just slightly. I don't normally use this, but that is how you change that. Another one you're going to change a lot is going to be your white balance. So in order to do that, you've got to come in here. Then you have these, you can use the arrows on the touch screen, or you can use the directional pad. I usually use Kelvin. The only downside to this, it, to this is that in order to change this, you have to click here on set the custom color and then you have to come in here and you have to do this again either with the number pad or you can use the touch screen i wish there was a faster way of changing this this is kind of the only one of the only downsides to this camera that i found but it's not that big of a deal here you can change your picture style and that's about it so everything else is normal just like any other tahani camera you have two different dials up here one for your shutter speed one for your aperture and then you're good to go. There's actually a button up here on the front near the shutter button that if you click on this, I have this set to um, this dual mode. So this is actually the fastest way to change my ISO. So I just hit this little small button on the front here and then I can just roll my ISO up and down. That is, uh, I think how the camera comes already. If you wanted to change that again, you would come in here to custom buttons, oops, custom buttons. And then right here, the MFN button, you would change that to dual function. And that also gives you the ability to hit that once and then you can just roll your ISO up and down. So everything I've been showing you on this screen so far has been in this Q menu, but there's actually a handful of buttons down here at the bottom, the ones that have boxes around them that you can actually access without having to go into the Q menu. So if you wanna just tap on your ISO right here, you can go ahead and change that. Same thing with your shutter speed and your aperture. And then there's one other button over here I really need to talk about, and this is your AI servo on and off button. So you can go ahead and click on this and it'll basically disable your autofocus. 
and then you can turn it back on. This is really, really helpful when you're using a gimbal. If you wanna lock focus on something, go ahead and turn this off. If you know you're gonna be crossing with something potentially in front of you, or you just wanna really have that autofocus locked on them, it's a really fast way to just turn it on, turn it off without having to actually switch your lens from auto into manual or something like that. All right, so there you guys go. Hopefully you found that helpful. Before we leave, I have one question I wanna ask everybody out there. If you are an EOS R owner, I wanna hear from you in the comments down below. What is your favorite thing? about the EOS R, your favorite feature, your favorite function, just anything about it. What is your favorite thing about the EOS R? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. If you loved this video and want to see more just like it, please consider subscribing to this channel. Like I said, this is our first official Ties Tech Line video. So if you want to see more questions be answered, go ahead and subscribe down below. And if you really love this video, thought it was super awesome and helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Ty from Ties Tech Line, and I'll see you next time.